you know, uh, some things come right out of the blue. Uh, you're not expecting them, and you don't know what's going to happen, and you keep on playing for something good, you know, uh, in a career. I played, uh, you know, last 30-some years uh, in, in a career trying to break through, as, as everyone does. That's one, one of the things you hope when you start. Um, and, uh, and over the past 25 years, you know, my career has been fading and fading, and and maybe six or seven years ago, I ran into, uh, I, I hear from a guy who I know, a, a, a low-budget producer, that he had just bought a real good script from a guy named Quentin Tarantino. He said, you never heard of this guy, but it's called True Romance. And he said, this Tarantino, that I was supposed to hire you, me. He wrote a part for me. I never heard of this guy. And I read it, and it was great. Uh, and uh, I thought I was going to have a good part there. Instead, the picture got snatched from this guy and went to a bigger producer, Tony Scott, and was made into a big picture, and, and uh, uh, Christopher Walken played that part. Then, uh, sometime later, I read a script by this same Tarantino, and it's also good. It's Reservoir Dogs, and I'm going to read for him, and I go to read for him, and for the part that eventually went to uh, um, Lawrence Tierney. And uh, after the reading, he walked me out and he said, listen, uh, he said, uh, I've seen your stuff and I know what you've done. He said, and, and he said, this might not work out. He said, but one of these days I'm going to use you. Fast forward to uh, last year sometime, I walked into a restaurant and I saw him and I said, hi, and what are you working on? And he said he was adapting Rum Punch, Elmore Leonard's novel, to a movie. He said I should read it, which I did. This year, around February, I walked into the same restaurant. He was sitting there. He had a script in his hand. He said, come on over. He handed me the script and said, see what you think. And, uh, you know, some things come as easy as can be, and uh, you just got to wait around for them. I think that's the idea. Uh, so he, uh, he handed it to me. I had to read for him, of course. Uh, and, you know, we, we had a working session. And after the working session, uh, I explained to him that I was uh, very I'd be thrilled if he wanted me to do this, and that I, if he wanted me to play the good guy in this picture, uh, it would change my life uh, in several ways, one of which was that I used to be a good guy in my career, but from the time I did Delta Force, where I played a terrorist, I've been a bad guy, and I haven't played a good guy since, and I told him I'd like very much to have a good guy career again, and he said, all right, you're going to make a good Max Cherry, and, uh, and that was that. So what is, what is this Max Cherry? Oh, he's, uh, he's a straight shooter, you know, uh, he's a good guy, uh, and, uh, and, and pretty much, you know, uh, I'm, a, I'm a good guy, I mean, I think of myself as a good guy, but uh, he is uh, a bail bondsman who, uh, who gets involved in this case with Jackie Brown, and for whom the most important thing at stake is love. So that puts us on the right footing. And what happens with the relationship with Jackie Brown? Uh, well, that's the subject of the picture, of course. Um, and, uh, and at the end, of course, uh, we're not absolutely sure uh, what, uh, what will happen, if anything more. But uh, it's, a, it's, a, uh, it's a delicate rom romance uh, woven into a, uh, a caper, a crime picture. Uh, and, uh, and it was a thrill to work with these people. You know, these are, these are big, big people. De Niro, he's one of my favorites. I never met him. Sam Jackson, he's astoundingly good. I never worked with anybody better than Sam Jackson. This guy is prepared right from the get-go. You walk on the set, you know you're going to have a good day's work. Don't forget, that's what it's about for an actor, each day's work. You get an opportunity to prepare some real good material that somebody wrote who likes you and wants you to do it, and you get to walk into a set with, uh, with great people around you and do a scene with, uh, for instance, Sam Jackson. This guy's good. Uh, Pam is good. Now, Pam I've known for a long time. I worked with her a couple of years ago on a picture for Fred Williamson called um, uh, Original Gangsters. First time I ever worked with her. Uh, but I've known her for a long time. I saw a lot of her old movies. She was in exploitation uh, 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 action pictures, and so was I during that period. And I think that's where Quentin uh, decided he liked us. Uh, so he probably has had a feeling for both of us that uh, one of these days he was going to do something for us, and, and look what he did. What a Christmas present. What is it that w ma makes Quentin uh, have this interest in this milieu? And like, for, for example, the, 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 the milieu of the movie, the, the whole environment of the movie. What is it that, that you think Quentin likes about it? 
gee, I, honestly, I don't know. You'd have to sort of get into his mind on that subject. He, uh, he's picked interesting subject matter, uh, always tough, always tough edge, hard edge stuff, uh, you know, true romance. Uh, that was when I realized this guy had a great ear for dialogue. He, uh, he wrote characters that, you know, were astoundingly well written. Um, and, uh, and every single picture that he's made has the same high quality dialogue. Now that's very special. Not many, not many writers can do it, obviously. Um, but he not only does it, but in this picture, he takes his time. He gives us plenty of it. He does not make these scenes short and fast. He makes them fun to listen to with, uh, with rich dialogue and, and it really gives the actors something special to work with. This guy's great. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much.